I love an onion and cheese tart with a little Sauvignon Blanc. And this one, I hope you'll enjoy. And I'll tell you some variations you can do on it so that you can make it special just for your family. So the first thing I'm gonna do is slice up a couple of shallots. And you can use any onion product for this. I really like shallots because they tend to be a little bit sweeter. And that's the flavor that I want with my Borson cheese. Now shallots also work when you're using a goat cheese and red onion works equally well. I also sometimes make this with a little white onion, but I reduce the amount because the onion tends to be a little stronger. So I'm gonna take two shallots and just give them a slice and then I'm gonna throw them over in my pan with a little bit of butter and let's saute a bit. So I have my shallots sauteed in about a tablespoon of butter and they are going to cool just a little bit sitting here on the counter while I put together the custard for this wonderful tart. So in my blender, I want to take some eggs, four of them to be exact. And remember always break one at a time, just in case if you get a shell in there or if one is bad, then you don't have everything destroyed. Now the next thing I wanna do is take two packages of Borson cheese. Now Borson is this wonderful creamy cheese that has herbs in it and it's so delicious. Here you can use regular cream cheese, you can use Borson, you can use any other kind of cream cheese that has herbs or garlic in it, or you can use goat cheese. Goat cheese goes well with your Sauvignon Blanc, but I'm allergic to goat cheese, so I wanted to make sure I could fix something that I could eat. Now let's give that just a little pulse. I don't wanna over blend this because if you do, you're gonna to get too much air. It's going to puff up in the oven like this. And then the next thing you know, you're going to have a way over processed tart. There we go, that's perfect. Now just a few pulses and that allows those eggs and the cheese to blend. And then I'm going to add a cup of heavy cream. Heavy cream works best in this. You can use half and half, but you're not going to get the texture that you really probably want for this. And then I'm gonna take some herbs. Now I love using fresh herbs. The recipe on the website will call for dried herbs, but I'll also tell you how to use fresh. So typically you would use about a teaspoon of each of these dried. Parsley, basil, and chives. But if you have fresh, you're going to use three times as much. There's more volume in fresh herbs because they have all of their moisture. When they're dried, they're brittle, they break right down, and so one teaspoon is equal to three teaspoons or one tablespoon fresh. Now let's take about a quarter teaspoon of salt and give it another couple of pulses. And I wanna go down in there with my spatula and just make sure that all those egg yolks are off the side of my bowl and incorporated in. It doesn't matter that you're using the one for the shallots because everything's going to be mixed together. There we go. Now we have it all ready. It's gonna go in our tart shell. So a lot of times when I see an onion and chev tart, onion and cheese tart, the onions are in the bottom. I actually like to put mine in the top so that as it's baking, they sort of find their own space within the tart. That way they're really mixed together. Now I'm going to pour this into a tart shell. You don't have to have a tart shell. You can use a pie pan for this if you want. It's going to look more like quiche when you do that, but don't feel like you have to run out and buy something new for your kitchen just to make this recipe. Unless, like me, you are completely addicted to kitchen gadgets. All right, so let's just put all of that in. It's mixed beautifully. Now you can use a pre-made pie shell, you can make your own, whatever you want to do. Depends on how much time you have and how much skill you have how much experimentation you want to do, 
and then of course the way you want it to taste. Now I'm just dropping these little shallots all through my tart. If you have a lot of excess butter, try not to get all that in because it will make little fat pockets. Now let's pop this into a 350 degree oven for about 50 minutes. Check it after 40, see if it's still jiggly in the middle. But usually it takes me 50 minutes if I'm using a tart pan like this. It takes me about 40 to 45 if I'm using a pie pan because they're a little bit wider and a little bit less deep. It's had a chance to cool and when it cools, Sometimes it comes out about like this over the pan, and then it will go in just a little bit. That's okay, that's not a problem. Now, because I used a tart pan, and I love using these tart pans, you can just lift this right out. So the tart lifts, and what I usually do is I try to slice it while it's still in the ring. That way, when I lift it out, I don't cut into the crust and crumble it all over the place. And here is the piece that I cut. So I just want to lift that right off of that disc. Now you can see that beautiful texture. And what I usually do is serve this with a little salad on the side. For today, just a little basil will do. And it's so, so pretty. And now let's give it a taste. So this beautiful Sauvignon Blanc is so crisp, highly acidic. So it cuts through that cheese, through the fat. Mm, beautiful. So good. Mm, just the way I remember.